Oh, hey guys. On this episode of Extreme UTV Tech, we're going to be putting some Turner Neverlift axles in our XP Turbo. All right, so if you like to push your machine to the limits like we do, or if you're into racing, one of the first weak links you're gonna find are these stock axle shafts. Now we ran all the 2016 race season with a set of Turner Eagle axles on our machine and had zero issues out of them whatsoever. So the first call we made when we picked up this 2016 Turbo for the 2017 race season was Turner Axle. They sent us out a full set of Turner Eagle axles and we're gonna show you how to install them on your machine today. As you can see, we already have our machine up on jack stands and the tires and wheels removed. Now here are some of the tools that you're gonna need for the process. You need a 15 millimeter socket and wrench, as well as a 27 millimeter socket to get the hub nut off. And you'll also need some kind of pry bar. We have this ginormous crowbar because that's what we had. And an impact makes things a lot easier, but it's not required. And first thing we're gonna do is get that hub nut off. All right, uh, first thing you're gonna need to do is the hub nut is on extremely tight from the factory, so you're either gonna need to put something in between the rotor and the hub to keep it from rotating while you get it off, or if you've got a friend helping you out, they can hold the brakes while you do this. All right, and it's on tight enough that you're probably going to need a cheater bar to get it off of there, break it loose. on with German torque. The next step you want to go ahead and remove both of the 15 millimeter bolts holding the caliper on. It helps to have a ginger to tell you whether it's right tidy or lefty loosey. difficult when it's backwards on you. All right, now a good tip for once you get the caliper removed is go ahead and use a bungee cord, loop it through, and we'll tie this up out of the way so it doesn't get in the way while we are trying to remove everything. Next, you wanna go ahead and remove the hub assembly and then we're gonna remove the bolts that hold the ball joints to the knuckle. Somebody at Polaris gets real happy with the impact. All right, so the next thing you need to do is remove the ball joints from the knuckle. Uh, they should just slide right out, but some of the older machines that have a lot of miles on them, you might have to use a rubber mallet. Then just slide the knuckle over, and you're ready to start removing the CV. All right, so this is what is holding the axle shaft into the front diff. It's just this little snap ring, and this is what you're going to be putting pressure on to get it out of the diff. Now, so we're going to pry on the, on the back side of the cup at the diff and try to get it out of there and you wanna just put a little bit of pressure on it pulling it out. If you put too much pressure on it, you can, un, uh, you can pull this out of socket and you don't wanna do that either. I'll be recording that. <laughs> All right, and that's your axle. So once you get your factory axle out, if you're gonna keep it as a spare, it's a good idea to go ahead and mark it. Now, most likely you'll never need these again, but we do a lot of dumb stuff with racing and bounty hills and things like that. So you never know what's gonna happen. So having these in the trailer and having them marked where people that don't know can run in there and be like, oh, factory front, that's what he needs. And can bring it back to you, you can get it put back together so you can hit the next hill. Uh, so I recommend go ahead and do that. 
So the differences between the rear and the front axles is the rear has a little bit bigger bell. It's also squared off and the front axle has a tapered bell. It's a little bit smaller in diameter and it is a little bit longer than the rear axle. So make sure you know which is which before you start installing them in your machine. All right, so next thing you wanna do is go ahead and install them in the front diff. Make sure you get the splines aligned and then we're just gonna knock it home with a rubber mallet. You'll know when they're locked in there because they won't move. You'll know when it's bottomed out. So that should be good. Now we're ready to put it all back together and it goes back the same way it came apart. Like not over there on the table. There we go. Is it a different thread? Huh? Different thread? No. Hmm? <clears throat> that too. I'm fairly certain the 1000 cow over here. Really? On the front? All right, now once you have everything back and assembled, you wanna go ahead and torque the hub nut to 80 foot-pounds. Now, this is a different nut than what came from the factory. It's one that Turner supplied, it's a little bit different, and uh, the one from the factory won't work. It needs to be torqued down to 80 foot-pounds, and you wanna put the little deal back in there to hold it for you, or get your buddy to hold the brakes again, and torque it down. All right, now this hub nut does not use a cotter pin like the factory one. Instead, you need to take a punch and a hammer and drive the outer edge of this hub nut into this groove. Like that, and then you're done. That'll lock it in place and you can put your tire and wheel back on. All right, and moving on to the rear, it starts the same way as the front by removing the cotter pin, the hub nut, as well as the caliper. That's more than 80 foot pounds. What is that? Air wrench goes to? All right, the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and remove the bolts that hold the radius rod to the hub. All right, now you just swing the trailing arm to the side Pull the CV out of the hub. All right, then put a little bit of pressure on the CV at the chunk end, and pop right out. Sometimes claw hammer works even better. All right, and go ahead and pop in your new Turner axle. Once you get the axle shaft slid into the hub, it all goes back together the same way it came apart. 
cut. Paste it. I did eggs against rocks. All right guys, that's it for the install on the Turner axles. It's that easy. Uh, they do have a break-in procedure. You can find it on their website, turnercycles.com. Uh, pretty much it comes down to, you wanna drive the machine around for five minutes and then check all your uh, CV clearances, uh, make sure they're still tight in the diff and also make sure there's no excessive heat at the CVs. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you wanna check out some older episodes of Extreme UTV, they're over here. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we really appreciate Turner hooking us up with some axles. Thanks a lot, guys. They're the strongest ones we've ever seen, and we can't wait to run them again this season. And as always, thanks for watching.